So remember, we think about the internet in three ways. We think about the internet as physical infrastructure, we think about the internet as the protocols that power it, and also as the content and the people that interact with it. So the people that go online and the things that they put there. Now the physical internet is all around us and we've seen that we can actually see it. And if you're somebody like me who really likes things that are tangible and who really has a thing for infrastructure, the physical internet is super exciting. Um, that's the wires and just the way that we've connected all of these billions of computers all over the earth together. The content on the internet is also really visible to us when we use the internet. We see web pages, we see the content of email. Uh, these are things that matter to us. The content online is really what draws us to the internet itself and is why we use it and it's why it's so important in our lives. But the protocols are a little bit different. The protocols are, to a lot of us, largely invisible. When we talk about protocols, there's nothing to see. There's nothing to point at. Um, protocols happen sort of invisibly, but they are probably the most interesting part of the internet, particularly if you are a computer scientist, because it's the protocols that tie everything together. Without protocols, the internet would just be a bunch of computers connected together with no one to talk to and nothing to do together. And without those protocols, there would be no way to access that content that draws us online. There'd be no way to send an email, there'd be no way to visit a web page, there'd be no way to listen to music or to even watch this video. So the protocols are really an exciting part of the internet. And again, particularly if you're a computer scientist or you're interested in computer science, the protocols that power the internet are some of the internet's greatest achievements, in my opinion. And they contain a lot of really deep computer science design principles. So as a computer scientist, there's a lot to learn from studying the architecture of the internet and how the protocols that run the internet work.